Okay, so let's look at how to solve out quadratics, to how to solve quadratics with square roots. And one of the things we need to know how to do is uh, reduce a, a radical, a square root. And so if we're going to simplify the square root of 80, one of the things that um, I like to do is a little upside down division. And I think of the smallest thing that can go into 80 that's prime. In this case, is 2. And I divide it. So 80 divided by 2 is 40. And I do this with the smallest number, prime number I can think of, until I get all the way down to just prime numbers. Okay? And since it's a square root, we look for pairs of 2's. And on, in this case, I have one pair of 2's right here and another pair of twos right here. And in order to work a square root, I have to take pairs out. So how many pairs of twos do I have? I've got one times another. And then what's left on the inside of the square root is this guy right here, the five. So how does the square root of 80 reduce? It reduces to four square roots of five. Another way that you could do this same problem is think about the different things that that make 80 and think about squares so for example 80 is equal to 16 times 5 so this would be the square root of 16 times 5 well the square root of 16 is 4 the square root of 5, we don't know, so it's just square root of 5. And uh, that's a couple different ways that you can look at this, at these problems. They're, they're not horrible, and uh, they're actually can be, they can be pretty fun. But you've, you've got to look for pairs. It's all about finding pairs of numbers. And every pair of numbers you find, you pull one of those numbers out. Okay? Uh, let's look at some more here. Uh, let's take 6 times, the square root of 6 times the square root of 21. If I have the square root of 6 times the square root of 21, then I've got the square root of 6 times 21. So let's look at another way to do this. I've got 6 is 2 times 3. 21 is 3 times 7. So what can I pull out of this guy? I can pull out those 3's. Okay, and if I pull out one three, what do I have? Three times the square root of fourteen. Okay, the other thing that you could do is multiply together six and twenty one. So this is going to be the square root of. 126 and with 126 you can make a factor tree so what times what makes 126 and uh, I see that 2 times well actually we could we could even easier we could go 6 and 21 and then what times what makes 21 7 and 3 what times what makes 6 2 and 3. Do I have any pairs? Well, here's a 3, and here's a 3. So they come out, 1, 3 comes out, and I have 2 times 7 left in. And since I have 2 times 7 left in, what do I really have? I really have 14. Okay? So there's a couple different ways to solve that one. With division, what I'm saying is the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 81. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 81 is 9. And that's all there is to that guy. And then the last one is the square root of 7 over the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 7... I don't know, so we just leave it. It's not a perfect square, so it just stays the square root of 7. The square root of 16, though, is 4. 
And so that's how you can reduce some of your simpler radicals. Look for pairs, and every pair of numbers you find you pull out, and the numbers that don't have pairs you leave in. Pairs go out, singles stay in. Okay, the other thing that you can do with uh, radicals is rationalize the denominator. So to do that, when you rationalize the denominator, you eliminate the ra elim eliminate eliminate the radical in the denominator. Okay, you want to eliminate the radical, and so when you do that, you're going to multiply a radical by itself. And since you're working with a fraction, whatever you do on the bottom, you have to do on the top. So, if I have the square root of 5 over 2, okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the square root of 5 over the square root of 2. This is what I have, okay? Since this is what I have, you'll notice that in the bottom down here, I've got a radical. Well, I don't want it. I don't want a radical. I just want a number. So what radical do I have? Well, I've got the square root of 2. So what I'm going to do is multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And I can do this because this guy right here reduces to 1. So basically, I'm multiplying by 1. Okay. So whatever I've done to the bottom of the equation, I'm going to do to the top. That's all there is to it. And then I multiply. So square root of 5 times the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Now I'm going to show every step on this guy because I want you to see how this develops. So this is going to be the square root of 5 times 2 over the square root of 2 times 2. Well, on the bottom, look at this. We're going to have the square root of 4. And on the top, we're going to have 10. So what do I end up with? I end up with the square root of 10 over 2. So one square root times itself uh, eliminates the radical. Well, let's look at this guy. What do we have on the other side here? I've got the square root of 2 over the square root of 15. So what do I need to multiply by? What is on the bottom? Square root of 15. So multiply by square root of 15 over the square root of 15. What you're going to end up with on the top is the square root of 30 and what you end up with on the bottom is just a 15. And that's all you can do on that guy. It doesn't go any further. So see if you can do this one on your own. How about this? The square root of 3 over 7. See if you can rationalize that guy. All right, so what we're going to do on this problem is solve a, a quadratic equation by taking square roots. And in order to do that, we want to get the square, the squared part, this guy right here, all alone, all by himself. And so to do that, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And then we're going to divide by 3. And so now... Now we've got x squared all by itself. And then from here, we just take the square root of both sides. And this is a, a legal trick as long as you do it on both sides. If you just do it on one side, it won't work. And any time you take the square root of something, you automatically get plus or minus. And in this case, we have the square root of 12. But uh, we can reduce this a little bit, so we have plus or minus the square root, 2 square roots of 3. Remember that 12 is equal to 4 times 3. 
units. So if we look at the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, then you get this guy right here. On, this se on the second problem, we want that x squared all by itself, so add 15 to both sides. Divide everything by 2 so that we can get x squared all alone. And then take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, you get x equals plus or minus the square root of 40. 40, though, reduces. And... Uh, it's equal to 4 times 10. So if we take the square root of both of these, you're going to end up with plus or minus 2 square roots of 10.